aortic stenosis is decrease in the opening of the aortic valve aortic valve opens at the beginning of the systole when the ventricles pump the blood into pulmonary artery that is the right ventricle and uh, the left ventricle pumps the blood into the aorta so if there is narrowing of this aortic valve so the opening diameter the aperture which will be there it will be smaller in size or we can say the area will be smaller in size normal aortic valve area upon opening is approximately 4 cm square and we call it as severe aortic stenosis when the area decreases to less than 1 cm square because in between this area generally aortic stenosis is asymptomatic and only in later stages of the disease do the symptoms appear so what can be the causes of this aortic stenosis Mainly, the pathological changes which take place are degenerative calcification changes. Okay, degenerative calcification changes. So, there is degeneration of the wall going on and because of this, there is deposit of the calcium crystals on this aortic valve. And why do they occur? First is that with age, okay. With age, these degenerative occurs and generally they are seen at about 65 to 70 years of age, right? However, if there is a congenital condition of bicuspid valve, then this degenerative changes can appear much earlier, approximately 10 to 20 years earlier. This aortic valve you see is tricuspid. All the valves of the heart are tricuspid except mitral valve which is a bicuspid valve. But this aortic valve is a tricuspid valve. If aortic valve is bicuspid at birth then there are more chances of this degenerative calcification changes going on in the valve. Then other causes can be rheumatic heart disease okay, and also fibrosis which occurs due to the radiation therapy. Right? So, all the causes which ultimately cause the degenerative calcification changes in aortic wall which will lead to the narrowing of the aperture of aortic wall. Let's move on to the pathophysiology. So, main problem in this aortic stenosis is obstruction to left ventricular outflow during systole. So, what happens due to this obstruction there is increase in left ventricular aortic pressure gradient. What is that? See, during systole, when the heart contracts, the ventricle contracts, there is increase in pressure in the ventricles, right? And this increase in pressure is approximately up to 120 millimeter mercury. That is the systolic pressure. So, whatever pressure changes take place in the left ventricle, say 120 millimeter mercury, because of this rise in pressure, the blood flows out into the aorta and this causes increase in pressure in the aorta as well, right? And the maximum pressure which reaches in the aorta is 120 millimeter mercury, okay? Actually, for the movement of the blood, there is a pressure gradient of approximately 2-3 millimeter mercury from left ventricle to aorta. So, maximum pressure in left ventricle can be 122 millimeter mercury. So, there is a pressure gradient of only 2 millimeter mercury. So, this is what? This is left ventricular aortic pressure gradient in physiological condition. And only 2 millimeter mercury is sufficient to cause the blood flow from the left ventricle to the aorta. However, problem occurs in case of aortic stenosis. What is that? See, there is blockage here, right? Because of this blockage, now left ventricle needs to generate more pressure to push the flow into the aorta, right? Why is that? See, we say according to Ohm's law, V is equal to IR, right? Voltage is equal to current into resistance. Same law we apply to the flow of the blood. In hemodynamics, we talk about it. How do we apply that? That is pressure is equal to flow into resistance, right? So, flow will be equal to pressure divided by resistance. This has come just by rearranging the equation, right? R goes down here. So, now if resistance is increasing, which occurs when there is aortic valve stenosis, 
in that case for flow to remain constant pressure should increase right so that's what is happening to push the blood left ventricle needs to generate more pressure so left ventricular pressure increases and sometimes the rise can be as much as 200 millimeter mercury so let us take some value say suppose this pressure increases to 150 millimeter mercury now because of this resistance which is offered at the level of the aortic wall there is loss of pressure head also hence the pressure which comes to aorta which reaches to aorta it is little bit less it is not 120 millimeter mercury it is 110 millimeter mercury because of the loss of the pressure head so here in normal condition you see the loss of the pressure head was normal 122 millimeter mercury and 120 millimeter mercury here the loss of the pressure head is too much because of the resistance offered right so what do we say how much is the left ventricular aortic pressure gradient it has increased increased tremendously because left ventricular pressure is now 150 and aortic pressure is only 110 so it has increased to 40 millimeter mercury from 2 millimeter mercury okay and this increase in left ventricular aortic pressure gradient depends on the severity of the aortic stenosis so we say in aortic stenosis there is a large left ventricular aortic pressure gradient or another word you will see is transvalvular pressure gradient because across the valve the pressure gradient is more so that is transvalvular pressure gradient so because of this increased pressure which the left ventricle has to generate there are certain compensatory changes which occur in the left ventricle and these compensatory changes initially are helpful but later cause deterioration so let us see what are these compensatory changes and how this pathophysiology proceeds so main compensatory change which occurs in aortic stenosis is left ventricular concentric hypertrophy right and this can be explained by laplace law which says wall tension is equal to the pressure generated multiplied by the radius divided by the thickness of the wall radius is the radius of the chamber okay so what we are saying is because of increase in resistance to maintain the same flow pressure needs to increase right so if left ventricle generates more pressure what will happen to wall tension wall tension is that there will be stress on the wall right so if this is the wall of the left ventricle this wall will there will be stress okay so it may rupture that we don't want so for that there will be compensatory changes and there is increase in the thickness of the valve okay so here there will be increase in the thickness of the valve and this is known as concentric hypertrophy so once thickness increases even with increased pressure tension on the wall will remain constant so this is a good compensatory change which is occurring so because of this concentric hypertrophy left ventricle is able to generate more pressure for longer time and hence it is able to maintain the cardiac output however with increased left ventricle aortic pressure gradient so that's what i told in the beginning that aortic stenosis is asymptomatic for very long time but over time as this concentric hypertrophy is occurring because aortic stenosis is progressing right so as it progresses there is not only increase in the muscle fibers here this concentric hypertrophy is not only because of increase in the muscle fibers but there is increased fibrosis also if you see robins the pathology what is happening in concentric hypertrophy you will see that uh, there it is written that apart from muscle growth there is fibrotic changes as well so it is not good it is leading to irreversible fibrosis within the muscle so two things happen because of that first there is decrease in ventricular compliance the muscle fails to relax completely so there is decrease in ventricular compliance because of this fibrosis and once ventricular compliance decreases with the same filling of the ventricle there will be increase in the end diastolic pressure right so this is the pressure volume loop which we classically see here right 
on x axis there is volume and uh, y axis there is pressure in the left ventricle and say suppose this is the normal graph in aortic stenosis this filling is somewhat like this right so there is increase in the pressure and once there is increase in the pressure that means the mitral valve will close early so because of decrease in ventricular compliance there is increase in the left ventricular end diastolic pressure because of this there is decrease in filling of the ventricles plus the back pressure also increases since left ventricular pressure is increasing now left atrial pressure will also increase since it has to pump blood into the left ventricle which is at higher pressure if left atrial pressure increases over time it will lead to left atrial compensatory changes also one of which is left atrial dilation right left atrial dilation and with time this will also not be sufficient so we are talking about progression of the disease here over time how these changes are taking place so over time this also will not be sufficient left atrial pressure will keep on increasing and finally there will be increase in the pulmonary capillary pressures and once pulmonary capillary pressure rise there will be development of pulmonary hypertension leading to pulmonary edema and the features of pulmonary hypertension will appear and what are the features of pulmonary hypertension development of orthopnea okay that is dyspnea in lying position paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea right and later on right ventricular hypertrophy right ventricular failure again back pressure development causing hepatomegaly all these features i have discussed in another video in mitral stenosis that also you can have a look so this is like the course once left atrial pressure increases because of the development of the back pressure there is development of pulmonary hypertension as well fine next thing which occurs with left atrial dilation is chances of atrial fibrillation increase so what we have discussed that with left ventricular concentric hypertrophy there will be decrease in ventricular compliance basically causing diastolic dysfunction of the heart we are telling no there is decreased filling so this is what diastolic dysfunction of the heart right so we talked about the consequences of development of the back pressure but because of decreased filling there will be decrease in cardiac output as well so we will have problems due to the forward failure as well since the blood is not going forward into the systemic circulation plus because of this irreversible fibrosis which is occurring in concentric hypertrophy there is decrease in systolic function as well since fibrotic tissue will not contract right so there is decrease in cardiac output with that due to decrease in the systolic function so both diastolic dysfunction and systolic dysfunction are leading to decrease in cardiac output and we will start getting the features of decrease in cardiac output and what are those these are exertional dyspnea okay when the person exercises there will be dyspnea breathlessness that is one due to development of pulmonary edema also which affects the oxygenation of the blood so there is exertional dyspnea due to decrease in oxygenation and also decrease in the cardiac output then there is exertional syncope again due to decreased cardiac output the person will exercise the requirement of the blood flow is going to increase but cardiac output is not increasing so blood flow to the brain will be compromised causing exertional syncope and finally there is exertional angina very important complication of aortic stenosis this is because a decrease in the coronary blood flow see the requirements of the heart has increased there is hypertrophy but proportionate increase in coronary blood flow is not occurring in fact there might be decrease as well why first of all the concentric hypertrophy has occurred so when the heart contracts there is compression of the vessels more compression of the vessels during the systole so during the systole the blood flow is decreasing but if you remember from coronary blood flow most of the blood flow in the heart occurs in the diastole that also decreases why we are telling that left ventricular end diastolic pressure increases okay now perfusion pressure for coronary blood flow how do we define that that is aortic pressure 
okay minus left ventricular diastolic pressure that is the perfusion pressure during diastole you have to calculate the pressure in one area minus the pressure in the other area aortic pressure why are we taking because coronary vessels are arising from the aorta this concept of coronary blood flow i have explained in another video you can check that uh, video on coronary blood flow fine anyway so we were talking here that during diastole also the blood flow is decreasing why because the pressure gradient to the flow is increasing since left ventricular diastolic pressure increases and aortic pressure is decreasing right so you see the pressure gradient during diastole is decreasing so coronary blood flow during diastole also decreases so that is another reason that why exertional angina can occur and third is obviously there is hypertrophy so the requirement of a heart is increased the heart is working more it is generating more pressure so the requirement of oxygen has increased which is not being fulfilled fine so with this pathophysiology now let us try to summarize what will be the signs and symptoms so i think you can only tell what will be the symptoms we have seen that due to decrease in cardiac output there can be exertional dyspnea there will be exertional syncope there will be exertional angina and all this occurs late in the disease initially the it is asymptomatic okay fine so that is due to decrease in cardiac output then due to development of the back pressure due to development of pulmonary edema there can be orthopnea and there can be pnd if this back pressure is log standing it will lead to right ventricular failure also which will lead to hepatomegaly right ascites that is abdominal distension so all those features you can get depending on which stage of the disease you are looking the patient then if there is development of atrial fibrillation because of left atrial dilation if atrial fibrillation develops then there will be presence of palpitations as well uh there will be fatigue also right because the cardiac output is not being met then because of decreased cardiac output there can be peripheral cyanosis as well peripheral cyanosis okay so those are the various symptoms which the patient will present with then on examination first how about the pulse how will the pulse be if you see the pulse character you palpate the carotid pulse you will feel slow uprise of the pulse slow uprise of carotid pulse okay it will not be fast because of the resistance to the blood flow so slow uprise of carotid pulse what is this type of pulse known as it is known as pulsus parvus et tardus pulsus parvus et tardus okay how about bp initially bp will be maintained later on the disease there will be decrease in the systolic blood pressure that is with development of left heart failure so as cardiac output decreases there will be decrease in systolic blood pressure because of this pulse pressure which is systolic blood pressure minus diastolic blood pressure okay since systolic blood pressure is decreasing pulse pressure is going to decrease right what about inspection and palpation of the cardiovascular system see we are telling left ventricular hypertrophy has occurred so that is felt as a shift in the apical impulse to the left side okay shift in apex beat to the left side because of left ventricular hypertrophy then there may be a palpable systolic thrill as well palpable systolic thrill okay because as we'll see in auscultation there is development of a murmur there is resistance to blood flow to the aortic wall so during systole this will create a turbulence and that will cause a development of a murmur which can be felt as systolic thrill and where it will be felt this is aortic wall so it will be felt in the aortic area where is aortic area of auscultation that is second intercostal space right side of the sternum second intercostal space just left to the sternum is pulmonary area second intercostal space just right to the sternum is the aortic area so there we can palpate a systolic thrill how about auscultation what will we hear in auscultation so here if we see graphically i have represented uh, heart sounds s1 and s2 
This is S1 which occurs due to the closure of the AV valves and here it is showing S2 which occurs due to closure of aortic and pulmonary valves. In between S1 and S2 ventricles contract so this represents systole and in between S2 and S1 ventricles relax so this represents diastole. So during systole there is movement of blood across the aortic valve right. So here in the systole we hear a murmur which is of crescendo decrescendo quality meaning crescendo decrescendo quality meaning is that initially it increases in intensity and then it decreases in intensity so this is how we represent it so with the closure of the av valve there is first isovolumetric contraction for some time right very small time and immediately after that as the aortic valve opens there will be resistance to blood flow and because of so huge transvalvular pressure gradient we get a murmur which increases in intensity initially why see in the initial part it represents a rapid ejection phase during rapid ejection phase the ventricles are contracting and the pressure of the ventricles is increasing so the pressure gradient across the valve also increases and we get a increase in the intensity of the murmur then later part it shows the slow ejection phase right slow ejection phase when even though the ventricles are contracting the pressure starts to drop so the intensity of the murmur also decreases so this murmur of aortic stenosis we say is of crescendo decrescendo quality or crescendo decrescendo systolic murmur is heard in aortic stenosis then s2 that is closure of the aortic valve is soft s2 is soft okay and where do we hear this murmur and this soft s2 again in the aortic area that is second intercostal space just right to the sternum then we can also have a audible s4 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 occurs during contraction of the atrium normally s4 is not audible but here because left ventricular end diastolic pressure has increased and uh, left atrium is pumping contracting against a increased left ventricular pressure so we can hear a audible s4 also so to summarize what are the auscultatory findings in auscultation we hear a crescendo decrescendo systolic murmur right site is second right intercostal space just next to the sternum and this murmur radiates to the carotids okay then soft s2 then there may be audible S4 as well. So that was all about aortic stenosis, its causes, its pathophysiology, progression of the disease and its associated signs and symptoms and the physiological basis of these various signs and symptoms. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, do press the like button, share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel Physiology Open. Thank you.